Hello 3D artists who use Redshift and 3D Studio Max. Today we're going to take a look at how to assign random object colors within a single material with Redshift. When working with a lot of objects, we often want to randomize the colors to make it look more natural. There are plenty of tutorials on how to do this with Redshift and other modeling software, but there are a few pieces missing when trying to do it in 3ds Max. So hopefully this video can fill in those gaps so that we Max users can also enjoy making piles of M&Ms and Skittles. I'll start off with a condensed version for the more gifted among us. To get random colors, assign a gradient ramp to your diffuse color or whatever material property you want to randomize. Make the gradient colors you want, change the gradient type to mapped, and use a Redshift Scalar User Data node for the source map. Type an attribute name and copy it. Select all your objects and run this max script, making sure to paste your attribute name in place of the highlighted text, and you're done. You can access each object's attribute value in the User Defined tab of the object properties. Now for those of us who actually want to learn something, let's take a closer look. Okay, first I'll show what we're going to work on. Here's our scene. We've got some gummy bears in a jar. The lighting is a simple HDRI with a few extra lights to make the jelly material glow a bit more. At the moment, all our gummy bears are yellow, and we want to make them more colors without having to create and assign different materials for each. At a glance, this is how we will accomplish it. Our gummy bears are currently using yellow for both the diffuse color and for the refraction color. We will want to fill both of those with a range of colors we specify and we want to randomly assign where in that range each object should fall. Let's walk through how to actually accomplish this in Max. Let's open our Material Editor and our Gummy Bear Material. I prefer to use the Compact Material Editor, but I'll try to describe everything in a way so you can easily do these same things with a node-based workflow. We'll begin by assigning a regular old gradient ramp to our diffuse color. Now, a gradient ramp would not be my first thought for selecting colors, but it actually is a very powerful tool. Let's start by changing our interpolation to solid, and then let's place some colors. Maybe I'll do tropical flavors. Let's do some blues, greens, yellow, and orange. Now this is where we start to have a lot of control. I'll come back to this later, but for now, take a look at this gradient. The distribution of colors here is exactly what will be distributed across our objects. So if we want more blue gummy bears, all we have to do is make it so blue takes up more space on the gradient. If we want to have less yellow, just make it so there's less yellow. You can even play around with changing the interpolation to linear to get an entire range of colors for your scene. But I want just a specific palette of colors, so I'm going to use solid. Next we need to specify where on the gradient each object should fall. To do this, we need to give the gradient a source map. We do this by changing the gradient type from linear to mapped. You'll see the source map has become enabled. Now for the gradient source, we will use a redshift user data node. In this case, we will be using the scalar type. You can name your attribute anything you like. We'll call ours gradient location to show that it's controlling where each object is placed on our gradient. I'll select that name and copy it. So this is where I hit a dead end when trying to follow tutorials to do this in other modeling programs like Blender and Cinema 4D. They all have a nice little button here to link this attribute to all sorts of useful stuff and to control everything. But in Max, we've got nothing. Where is this attribute referencing? How does it know what I've typed here? Well, it's actually in the object properties. Let's right click any object and open not the Redshift object properties, but the regular object properties. You'll see at the top there's a tab called User Defined. This is where the attribute needs to connect. For example, we can paste our attribute name here and write equals 0.5. Now this specific object will be placed at the halfway point on our gradient. Likewise, if we were skipping the gradient entirely and wanted to use the color user data node, we could type a red, green, and blue value like equals 1, 0, 0 to get a red color. This is useful if you want to give a small number of objects unique colors while using the same material for all of them. The problem for us at this point is that we don't want to assign a specific value to our objects. We need to give them all random values. I don't know of any built-in way to do this, so we have to resort to some very simple Max script. Don't worry if you don't do any scripting, I don't either. I'll walk you through what you need to know to control what you're doing. So let's close our object properties and go to Scripting, New Script. Okay, just follow along with me and I'll explain as we go. 
We'll start by telling it to give us an error message if we forgot to select anything. We'll say if selection.count is greater than zero, then blah else message box select at least one object. This way I won't be confused if I run this script years from now and it doesn't do anything because I forgot to select anything. So instead of just being confused, it'll kind of point me in the direction of what I need to do. Let's test it out by making sure nothing is selected in our scene. And then let's go to Tools, Evaluate All. Perfect, we can see our message saying select at least one object, or select at least one object. Perfect. Okay, now let's actually write our script. I'm going to space some things out here just a little bit. And instead of blah, let's start with for obj in selection do open parenthesis, close parenthesis. This says that for each object we have selected, do whatever's in the parentheses. So I'm going to expand out these parentheses a little bit to give myself some space to type. And let's say rval equals open parenthesis random 0, 0.000 space 1.000. So in this line, we create a variable called the rval. You can name it anything you want to, that's just what I use to make myself sound like a programmer. Set it to a random number between 0 and 1. And actually, adding these zeros after the decimal is actually vital to getting this to work right. MaxScript decides whether to make this variable able to use decimals or just whole numbers based on how you type these values that are going into it. So if you just type 0 to 1, this would actually return either 0 or 1, because it doesn't allow for any decimal places. And so in your gradient, that would mean you, the only colors being selected would be at the zero point or the one point at the very end of your spectrum. So if that's happening in your scene, uh, check this in your script to make sure that you've allowed for decimal placement in your variable. So we'll add a new line and we'll keep going. Set user prop obj. And here I'm going to right click and paste to make sure that I get that name exactly the same as it was over here in our attribute name from our, um, from our material. So gradient location, rval. So this tells us to create a user property for the current object called gradient location, which is the name our material node is trying to connect to. And then it will assign it the value that's in rval which we declared before was a random number from 0 to 1. So let's take a look at this in action on an object. Let's select an object, go to the object properties, and we can see there are no user defined properties right now. But let's close this and let's go to tools, evaluate all. Now if we take a look at our object properties, you can see that one has been defined called gradient location and its value is at 0.9. Let's try it again. We have our object selected, tools, evaluate all and let's check our object properties and now it's been replaced with a, a value of 0.83 so you can see the script is pretty smart about how it does this it actually checks to see if you already have one called gradient location and if you do it'll just overwrite it so that works really nice if you got a big scene and you've been adding some stuff testing it out you can just keep running the script over and over and it won't build up a giant list of these different properties it'll just keep replacing the one okay our script should be ready to run We've tested it on a single object, so now let's select all our gummy bears, and let's evaluate all. Okay, I guess that worked. Uh, but if you want, you could add another line in the script saying it was successful. Let's go ahead and do that quick. Let's go outside of the loop here. And we'll say message box success. And so now we still have all our objects selected. Let's go ahead and just go to tools, evaluate all, and perfect, now it shows us it's been a success. And we can check to make sure by selecting one or two of these bears, checking the object properties, and sure enough, there's gradient locations assigned to each of them, and they all have values between zero and one. Okay, now let's trace our steps backward to better understand what we've just done. First, we've assigned a random decimal value from 0 to 1 to each of our objects under a user property called gradient location. 
Then within our material, the Redshift Scalar User Data node is set to access this gradient location property. And pass it along to the source map driving placement on a gradient ramp that specifies which colors will be used. This gradient ramp is then placed into our diffuse color slot. We need to connect that all to the refraction as well. So let's just copy this down, make it an instance, and that way it will be identical between the two colors all the time for each gummy bear, which is what we want in this case. All right, if we're lucky, we did that right, and our gummy bears should now be tropical gummy bears. Let's render and take a look. Fantastic. If you don't like the way it distributed the colors, um, feel free to come in and select a few of these gummy bears and go ahead and just uh, run the script again. And you can see those changed right up. So you can keep trying it on different objects and just to adjust the color distribution if you need to. Now let's say I'm tired of tropical gummy bears. I just want the traditional colors. All I have to do is go into my gradient and change the colors. And you can see it updates in the render. And say I want most of them to be green. Easy, I just adjust my gradient to be mostly green. Or as we demonstrated before, maybe I want to have them be mostly white, mostly yellow, mostly red. Anything you want to do, whatever's drawn out in your gradient, that will be the distribution of colors. So you have total control over how this is randomized. You can weight it toward different colors and have some bias in there without having to go into more advanced randomization math back in our scripting. And here maybe I'll demonstrate too what it looks like if we turn off our um, solid interpolation and instead go to a linear interpolation. Now our gummy bears are given colors within this entire range of values from green to this kind of whitish color. Very cool. But for now, I think I'll leave it at solid and we'll evenly distribute our colors a little bit more. And that should be everything. Hopefully this has given you some new tools to control the colors of large numbers of objects while keeping your materials simple and organized. Oh, and one more thing for those of you who are blazing your own trail and trying to adapt this to new techniques like randomizing colors or vectors, it helps to be able to see what values are being assigned when you are scripting. Um, if you're ever getting weird results when you run the randomization script and you're not sure where that's coming from, you can take a look and see what it's doing by going to scripting max script listener. And if you press, I, I just press control D to clear it out. Otherwise you can do edit clear all. And you can add a line inside of your loop that says something like print rval. And what that does now is if we run this script. I do have some objects selected, so let's evaluate all. It's a success, and now over here in our listener, you can see we have a list of all the values that were assigned to those objects. And so I can see it's 0 0.72, 8872, so I know that these are good numbers. But for example, if I had forgotten to put these decimal points in here, and I go to Tools, Evaluate All, Success, but now I would be having problems with my material with the colors not being assigned correctly. Well, I can look into my listener and see, oh, they're just being ones and zeros. And I know like, okay, that means something's going wrong with how that value is storing those numbers. And I can go in and check that out and say, oh yeah, that's because I forgot to put the decimals in here. And so now let's try to evaluate all again. And now this time it's back to values from zero to one. So that's just something if you want to break off on your own, that's a little tool to help you debug stuff and to get it working the way you want it to. Um, it helped me know for sure when I had it working and when it was broken. So I'm just going to remove that since I know mine is working. And I think that's all. I hope this helps and good luck on your projects.